What's up everyone, PK here. Welcome to another episode. So today we're gonna to be going crabbing again. And I got my son Jay here with me. And we're gonna to try to set our pots in the dark. Right now it's about seven o'clock and high tide's about 10. So hopefully we're gonna catch some big crabs. You ready, Jay? Absolutely. Let's All right. Them. So we're gonna go past this bridge and set our pots in about 20 foot of water. Looks like it's gonna start to rain. I see a lot of clouds. Hopefully it'll be all right. Okay, folks, enjoy the show. I guess many people wanna know where we're crabbing. We're in San Francisco Bay. That's the Golden Gate Bridge right here. And we're just gonna go past a little bit and drop our pots. Remember, folks, the best time to go crabbing on the Oregon coast is in the fall, starting late August to about mid-December. I catch most of my crabs in October. For this trip, I got some really interesting underwater crabbing video showing what happens when using a castable crab trap. But today I was using a hand line to demonstrate that you can get big crabs for $30 including rope, bait holder, and trap. It's the cheapest and easiest way to crab on the Oregon coast if you don't have a rod and reel to use for these type of traps. I've used this same setup casting from the shore at Celeste Bay where I caught several big crabs. But I've always wanted to see what happens underwater using this kind of trap. So I got an opportunity today since we were crabbing from a boat. We always start off dropping pots and then we anchor down and set up our castable traps. And you can only use three traps per person here in Oregon. You always want to use chicken because they are the best bait for Dungeness crab. So this first cast, I was using a crab hawk and unfortunately I didn't catch anything. So I put that away and I went over to set up the crab daddy. To get the underwater video, I just attached a GoPro to a PVC pipe and I attached that to the trap. Now the GoPro is only waterproof down to 30 feet and we were crabbing in about 17 to 20 foot of water so I knew it was okay. Okay, so here is the first pole, and I got my bait secured and a GoPro mounted, so we are ready to drop the trap. And just a quick background on Crab Daddy. Uh, the Crab Daddy is made by Ivan Humphrey in Lincoln City, and he also sells it with a hand line, so you don't have to figure out what's the best rope to use with this trap. He's always crabbing on the Celeste Beach, so if you see him, you can buy from him for $30 each. You can also buy them from the Ace Hardware store right there in Lincoln City. This first drop was very interesting to me because I always wanted to do an underwater video on the crab trap. And uh, I've never seen a video like this before. So. so everything goes to plan and the trap falls slowly to the bottom. And the best part is it stayed open so you know this is going to work pretty good. If you look at the way the current is going, it's going away from the viewer. And guess which way the crabs come from? That's right, downstream of the current. The crabs have to pick up the bait scent before they show up. This is why I always tell people to use a lot of chicken because it's going to create a lot of uh, smell and it's going to make that scent trail really potent. Now you notice I didn't put on the bait very well and it looks like it's going to come off. When these crabs eat the bait, they're actually pulling on it. One is pulling, the other one's pulling, so it's pulling in all directions. So the bait can easily come off if you're not careful. Now you notice the trap actually moved. Um, you would think that if they move a little bit, they'll get skittish and then walk away or run away. Actually, they don't do that. I didn't know that, so that's interesting to learn. Now it doesn't seem to take them very long. It's probably average about 30 seconds before the crabs show up, sometime sooner. Now when the first crab show up, he starts eating, he starts tearing at the chicken. So the pieces of bait is floating in the water, floating downstream, down the current, so which attracts more crab. This is probably about a minute to a minute 15 seconds, and you can see there's about five or six crabs just eating the bait right now. And now you can see a bigger pile, they're just gang tackling that bait, that chicken. Now this shows that as they eat those bait, as they eat the chicken, small pieces of the bait, it just dissipates into the current which attracts more crab. Now you want to pull up the trap when, the, when you have the most crab on the trap, but you don't know that, you know, because they're underwater. So that's when you want to pull it is when the pile is largest. Now I pull it in and as you can see, I lose some crab as I pull it in. I probably lost about four or five good crabs. 
So the lesson here, the faster you pull in, the less you lose because they don't have a chance to escape. Overall, this first underwater video was a really good way to learn about, you know, how to better catch crabs. <laughs> now, give me some great video. Yeah, it's on too, buddy. <laughs> right there, folks, on the crab daddy. <laughs> That's awesome. That's how you do it, son. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Oh, oh, poor guy. No, oh, sorry about that. Did you get hurt? Oh. We have one keeper. Two. Well, maybe. We'll see here. Look at he's in. He's in my throat and still attacking the chicken. We'll keep it. But what we'll do is if, if we get too many, we'll just pick them out. Toss them back. Okay, that one is six and a quarter. Six and a quarter. That's a good size. Okay, so here's underwater video number two for the second drop. As the trap is falling down to the bottom you can see that it's pointed up because the GoPro is heavier so it's gonna point down and what I need to do next time is maybe add a counterbalance on the other side of the PVC pipe now when I dropped this trap I didn't know the bait was hanging kind of loose I actually lost my bait in this video and I wasn't sure why until I watched the video and as you can see when it landed, it landed upside down so I didn't think I would catch anything. But after about 30 seconds or 40 seconds, the uh, trap right it side up. When the trap landed upside down like that, the crab can't get inside to eat the bait. So luckily, it turned right side up after a while. So here eventually the trap rides it side up. And when it does, you see the rope gets caught underneath. And so that puts the one side of the trap at an angle. And even though it was at an angle and it wasn't open all the way flat, the crabs were still able to find the bait and get inside. This time the current is coming more toward left to right towards the camera. So guess where the crabs come from? It just goes to show you that you can't depend on traps landing in the same orientation every time, even if you follow the exact same motion from pole to pole. Now besides crab, you can see the silver surf perch there attracted to the bait. He's swimming around it. Actually, I don't know if those are silver perch or not. I'm just guessing. Now I must have found a better spot than the first drop because this time it seems like there's more crabs in the trap after two minutes than I had for the first drop. Now right about now is when you want to pull it because there's some pretty big crabs in there. But obviously I didn't know that because this was underwater. As you can see, they're just swarming all over that chicken. Now as you can see, we've got a large group of crabs just attacking that bait. But as you can see soon here, they were able to rip the bait off the trap. And with no bait on the trap, you know, they really have no reason to stay, so they escape. If only I pulled sooner, I would have a good haul during this second pull. Now here you see me to start pull up the trap, but by then it's too late because all the crabs have escaped already. Okay, so this second drop was a fail, so let's try another one and this will be the third drop. Okay, so here is the third drop. Now let's see if we can get this right. And let's see how the trap's gonna fall in the water. First off, you see the nose goes first because the camera weighs the front down more. So there it lands on the ground upside down. 
and there it is a trap laying upside down on the ground and it's got a lot of seaweed there so you're probably thinking well this is probably not going to work very well the first crab comes in about 25 to 30 seconds and then a few moment later a few seconds later the third crab comes in this is why I always tell people to go crabbing in the fall, like October, because this way you're going to catch a lot more crab. Okay, so let's speed up the scene a little bit and go towards the middle. And as we go towards the middle, we see like there's a lot of seaweed that gets caught in a trap. As you can see here, the seaweed has completely blocked the camera, so we can't see anything. So we're about probably nine minutes in i kind of left it down there long and i'm about to pull up the trap so what i learned from these traps is and my advice is when you pull it up do it really fast so that way you can close the sides really quick and they close shut just like that see it and that way the crabs can escape and you'll catch more so even though the trap landed upside down this was a pretty good haul yeah look at check out a crab daddy check that out folks I think that's a keeper Oop. this one is too small Ooh, really yep but I think that's gonna be close actually Keeper. Yep, he's a keeper. 23. He's a keeper. 23. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that, that fell heavy. This one's heavy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, man. Oh, how big they are. Holy oh, only two of them, too. Check oh, that out. It is. Look how big that guy is. That's a keeper. So we got 23. We got one more. This one can go back. <laughs> oh my goodness that is a monster crab check that out folks holy snap Woo! that sucker is a hard shell good job son thank you dad Woo! my dad showed me how I know everything from my dad pull through. Oh, first pull in a new place new place let's make it count Oh, that oh, feels good. Oh, Jesus. Look at that rod bend. I can't even hardly must pull be, it up. Must be a couple of five pounders in Unless there. Unless I got the anchor. Oh, you might have the anchor. Oh, that looks good. Just a shadow. Oh my goodness. Oh, dud. Oh, it's a lot of Mmm. Ow. Scram. Okay, my turn. Come on. Oh no, it's pretty light. Bring it. Oh, here we go. Oh, there you go. Oh, female. Oh. <laughs> Try this side. The cat's way up there. Well, there we go. A little better, but they're all female. Come on, out. Scram, you guys. There you go. The crab hawk's been soaking for about five minutes. We're gonna lift it up. I'm gonna let Jay, let my son lift it up first. All right, Dad, here we go. All right. Ooh. You got the, uh, wow. You got the, the crab daddy, right? Oh, yes. Okay. I should have reeled in slack a lot faster, though. <laughs> I'm not used here to, we go. I'm not used to using this on the, oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh let me see. Oops, sorry. Okay, there we go. Okay, first pull on a crab daddy. All the little guys. Okay, these are not what we want. We want the ones that are about 9, 10 inches. Okay, it's my turn. All right. Come on, Dad, show me how. That's it. Oh, no, it's pretty light. I think we're going to leave it down a little bit longer. Oh man, that's a fail. <laughs> oh, okay. Nope. First fail for the crab hawk. It got caught in that um, 
this groove right there. Well, they are eating it. We can tell because that chicken is half eaten. Okay, lift number two. Oh boy, see what we got. Hopefully we got one. But, well, the boy is bad. I mean, this is a real petty. There you go, there you go. Oh, shoot. Oh, yes. Oh. Okay, so we got one right there. I don't think he is legal. Are you legal, buddy? Close. Yeah, I don't think it's legal. We're gonna move to a new spot, okay? Yeah, no good. Right there. First crap. Not legal though. Pretty. You're right. They're pretty clean. Yeah, here we go. Hey, Dad, come on, buddy. Oh, holy moly! Whoa! Whoa, nice hog. Look at that. We got Dad. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, they're all too small, but that's a pretty good haul. Even the big one? That one? Yeah. That was a good haul. Yeah. Whoa, good one. Oh. Yeah, that feels good. That just might be the drag on the current, though. Oh, there we go. Oh, looking good. Oh, yes. Oh, look at him. Holy moly. Oh, good oh, one there. Yes. Copyright right. keeper. There we go, folks. Check that out. We have a keeper right there. And the rest are all too small. There we go. Look at that. That's a nice one, folks. Oh. <laughs> Man, this is... That looks pretty good. Yep. Oh, yes! Yes! <laughs> Come on. Gotcha! Holy gotcha! Oh. Holy moly! Man, that's a big one. That's a huge one. It is. Look what my son caught. Big old crab. No good, no good. Very good. Nice. That was a good move. Woo! Look at that puppy. He's probably about seven inches. Easy. That's a nice size. It is. That's a hard shell too. Good job, son. Thanks, Dad. Okay, folks. So we are back at the boat ramp. And we're going to close it right here. I want to thank Jay for coming out with me. It was a lot of fun, Dad. Thank you so much. For <laughs> That's me. right. So it's, this is like a father and son time together here. It's pretty awesome. And just let me show you the crabs that we got. Now it's kind of hard to tell just by the GoPro because it's such a wide angle lens that pushes everything back into the foreground, sorry, the background. But I can assure you these are pretty big. So here is a uh, gauge just to give you a sense of idea how big they are. That's a lot of crab. It's like three deep too. Yeah, a lot of crabs. And we caught them on the crab hawks and the crab daddy and crab hawks. Yes, Mostly sir. the crab pot. That's just one pole too on the crab pots. So that's it folks. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Have fun fishing. Tight line.